Hello, Vera Shop shoppers. Hope you're well wherever you may be in the world. Um, it is a uh, relatively overcast Sunday here in London. It's um, it's relatively mild out though, which is always a nice thing. So it is still summer, just. Um, I know. Obviously, last week we were uh, discussing the history of shorts. And um, certainly this weather, I don't know if it's preferable to shorts, but what it is preferable for is trousers. And that's the subject what we'll be talking today about. Um, so we're going to be discussing the history of the fabled trouser. Uh, we'll be discussing various fits and styles and what best you to do to make sure that you get the best look out of your trouser and make sure you pick the right style. And um, I'll also be talking about my own personal experiences with uh, certain trousers and we will also finally be going through some of Vera Shop's trouser range as well so um, thank you very much for joining me once again once in here on the Vera Shop live stream app and I also have um, uh, some coffee with me today I've decided against the tea I thought a little bit of uh, caffeine would probably be the best bet for this Sunday afternoon so hmm Please do join me and uh, maybe stick the kettle on and uh, make yourself a cuppa. So I've got some uh, visual prompts here as well to uh, to kick the show off. So the uh, the tra trousers originally are very interesting because, uh, as you know, in uh, ancient Roman, ancient Greece, togas were usually worn and robes and, and various garments of that nature. It was really only uh, in the province of the, say, Han Dynasty China that trousers came about. And the reason why men started wearing trousers instead of robes and togas and that silk garments is because of horse riding. Partly because, obviously, if you'll be wearing, um, you know, a robe during horse riding, obviously the uh, the horse hair becomes very brittle against, uh, against one's leg. And obviously you don't want chapped legs. So the idea of wearing trousers during horse riding, say obviously for pleasure or when in battle, became a very important um, part of the uniform. And of course, trousers, like many actually of the garments that we talk about during the show, originated from military dress wear and then fed through to, you know, the general population. So these are uh, the world's oldest pair of trousers, which have ever been discovered. And these were, as mentioned before, discovered in uh, a cemetery, I believe, in China. And I think, I believe they're about 3,000 years old. So um, I don't think you'll be finding these on the Veroshop website anytime soon. Uh, apparently they're made of wool as well, which of course you can still buy wool trousers to this day. Um, and uh, yeah, so as I said, they were found in a cemetery in China. These are the world's oldest uh, pair of trousers ever discovered. So you've got the right here, right now. And apparently as well, I've got a fantastic CGI reconstruction as to what these trousers would have originally looked like. Uh, I'm not sure how they're able to determine the colour, um, but uh, I guess green was very in vogue at the time. Now, I, love a, I love a bit of olive green and mustard yellow. You can't really go wrong. So moving forward to history... Um, oh, and one thing I'd also say in regards to uh, Chinese trousers is that at the time, as mentioned before, ancient and Roman Greeks, they, uh, they heavily despised the trousers. They thought trousers were ludicrous. Uh, and so they didn't follow suit until a lot later, until uh, ancient Rome or, or the, Rome, the Roman civilization, the Roman Empire, uh, basically invaded the upper northern regions of Europe, where obviously it's far more colder and less preferable to be wearing, you know, garments such as togas. So they did eventually adopt the trouser as a form of dress wear, but it was a lot later into, uh, into the Roman period. So moving on from there, uh, bring you to the Middle Ages now. And um, again, following on from the Roman invasion of Britain, trousers did become popular in regards to the general populace. So here it is. Here's a chap in the uh, in the Magna Carta who is uh, he's wearing a pair of trousers. And actually, to be fair, in regards to um, today, it's not that similar to what we currently do wear. Um, this is a little later, though. So in the 1500s, uh, around about then, uh, what was what became was uh, sort of almost like two, um, two. I'd say leg trouser leg, but they were, they were trouser leg attachments essentially. Uh, so they were attached at the waist. But the one thing they were missing 
was the area where the nether regions were. And that's where we get the uh, cod piece from. And if you can see there, this gent here, he's wearing a traditional cod piece in between. So where today we have the crutch and the uh, the trouser legs are attached to uh, the, you know, the crutch area, I would say, this uh, at the time they, they would wear a cod piece. And the cod piece became quite a, a symbol of virility. And again, I think quite interesting in regards to the show in regards to fashion history a lot of these garments and clothing have always somehow been associated with some form of virility and certainly trousers are very much part of that spectrum so uh, as the decades rolled on in regards to the invention of the cod piece they became far more phallic in regards to showing how virile a man is of course even you know this can relate to today in regards to certain looks and types of trousers throughout the ages and so the last say i don't know 50 60 years um certainly some um fits have been far more popularized because they've been deemed to be far more sexy you know sexually gratifying of the day if you think about things like men wearing drain pipes for instance or when men, men were wearing uh baggy jeans that was the kind of cool macho look of its era and again i think that all relates to sort of masculinity and virility and sex essentially so moving on from the 1500s uh if we move to the 1700s actually before i get to this chap just a small caveat to history uh the great czar peter the great he uh, actually he mandated he made a decree in 1701 commanding all Russian men, other than, you know, sort of priests and holy men, all Russian men had to wear trousers from then on in. So you can thank Peter the Great for popularising trousers in uh, the early 1700s because of the decree that he made. I don't know why he was against anything else other than trousers. That might be lost to history or Perhaps someone that knows uh, a lot more about Peter the Great uh, would be able to tell you as to why that was the case. But clearly, uh, they became to, uh, they became a civilized part of civilian uniform. And uh, fun fact, actually, Peter the Great and I are uh, we're birthday twins. He was also apparently born on June the 9th, which is my birthday. So, fellow Gemini, there, Mr. Peter the Great. Uh, moving on, and I just showed you this guy a little earlier. And again, this is a person that definitely does come up uh, a lot in uh, you know, traditional menswear and clothing, especially here in England, which is where I currently am live streaming from. And that is uh, Bew Brummel. So uh, Bew Brummel, who famously, apparently, or infamously, took three hours to get ready every morning uh, before he would step out the door. He, Bew Brummel was a very well-known uh, dandy in the Regency era. Uh, he was certainly someone that you would consider today to be an eccentric and he was incredibly fashion conscious as well. So if you actually go to uh, German Street um, off Piccadilly in London, uh, which is a very, very famous street, it's similar to Savile Row, but I guess German Street will be slightly more well known for shirts. Um, there is a statue of Mr. Brummel there, just facing one of the uh, one of the arcades, actually one of the shopping arcades. So, if you're next time you're in London and you're around Piccadilly, go to German Street, and there is a statue of this chap. And um, one of the things that uh, Bew certainly heralded was the trouser. So um, he preferred um, pantaloons, which pantaloons are slightly oversized trouser essentially it's a slightly oversized trouser leg and it sort of cinches more towards the the waist so you can thank Bu Brummel for the pantaloon and um, still today actually you can buy pantaloons albeit more in a contemporary sense so uh, if pantaloons are your thing then you can thank Bu Brummel for that moving slightly later in regards to history uh, it was in the 19th century, actually, when trousers that you and I would know today became far more popular. Um, and the chap that heralded those types of trousers, the modern trouser, was actually Queen Victoria's son, who is Edward VII. Uh, and obviously he was uh, the Prince of Wales as well, briefly king for about nine years sitting on the throne. Obviously because his, uh, his mum was, uh, apart from Queen Elizabeth II today, the longest reigning monarch in British history. So, uh, yeah, so Henry VII, Prince of Wales, was the chap that uh, popularised the modern trouser leg that we certainly know today in regards to the, uh, you know, the, the, the zip or fly front uh, pocket uh, with, you know, the two side pockets attached. 
Um, so yes, you can thank Mr. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, you can thank Prince of uh, Wales for the modern trouser. And this is where I'm going to start going into uh, trousers today. And uh, I have some of my own here. And actually, whilst we're talking about trousers today, I'm going to put on the first product on the Vera Shop line. So I'm going to present that to you now. And it is the uh, Regatta Men's Landing Trousers, um, uh, which, bear in mind, was originally $61, just under, and is now $22.48. Um, and that is partly because, obviously, they are, I believe, now on discount. But also, it's because... All of the products, all of the trousers that I'm featuring on today's show have an extra 15% off. So definitely take advantage of that deal. And also bear in mind that uh, if you're slightly undecided in regards to purchasing uh, any of the trousers now, you can also wait half an hour until the show ends in order to still have that 15% off live stream deal. So it is a deal and it's a steal. I would highly recommend uh, taking advantage of that. Um, so um, I quite like these trousers, actually. I think they're a nice mix between uh, work and play. They're not too overly formal. I think they would work quite well in sort of a contemporary, modern office, cosmopolitan city. You know, you don't, you're not forced to be wearing, you know, a, a three-piece suit. Um, and I, I quite like the look of those regatta trousers. Mm. And I'm going to show you some of my own as well here. So um obviously as it's summer i've tried to pick out some more of the summer wear but i will be honest with you because a few of my trousers are currently um in the dry cleaners at the moment so you've caught me on the, the wrong or the, the right week but um certainly i would suggest dry cleaning your trousers often especially during the summer month so these trousers here i don't know if you can see maybe if i if i stand back a little, stand back a little here uh these trousers here i bought uh from Paul Smith uh, last summer, actually. And I like these trousers because they, um, they're they not strictly very heavy, which is perfect for the summer month because you, you want to invest in some summer trousers, if you're gonna go that direction, that are light and breathable. And th these certainly are, um, but still retaining their formality because I like to, you know, if I'm out on the town, uh, of a night, I like to dress relatively smart. I'm sure you can tell I'm wearing a, vase, a you know, velvet blazer right now. Um, so these do come with uh, a jacket as well to match as well. And hopefully, one week we'll be getting um, we'll be getting onto the subject of jackets, which I've got loads to talk about in regards to men suiting and jackets. So maybe all that's to come. But uh, right now we do have the, uh, the 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 trousers, the suit trousers, because that's obviously what we're talking about today. Hi, Adrian. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining. Appreciate you being here. Um, Adrian, we we're just talking about the uh, the men's trouser and uh, we're talking about the history of the men's trousers. Um, I'll give you a quick recap towards the end because I've got loads of fun facts about men's trousers. Actually, as you've just joined, as a small treat, I'll give you a fun fact about trousers, men's trousers right now. Apparently in Germany, it has been reported that dog bites leave 220... Hold on. 225, no, 2,255 postmen with torn trousers every year. So, you know, I don't know what these German dogs are doing to these German postmen, but come on, guys, calm down. Um, what, have you, what are you writing? I'm ready to learn about some pants. Yes, pants, of course, yes, pants. Because uh, in America, you guys call trousers pants, whereas in Britain, we call pants underwear. So I don't want to, you know, make sure... Don't want to get any confusion today, guys. I'm talking about pants, US, trousers, UK. Maybe one, you know, maybe one show coming up, I could start talking about men's underwear. I've got many experiences wearing different men's underwear. Not not different men, my own underwear that have been different over the years. So perhaps that's all to come. Um, so I was uh, just talking about one of my purchases from the last year, which is these Paul Smith trousers. Uh, and I was just saying that they are very light and breathable, but they also retain their formality, which is a really uh, fine thing. Um, I'm going to move on just to the next product now to display to you guys, which is uh, Asquith and Fox. And uh, this is the men's casual trouser, which I'm a big fan of, actually. I like the colour, especially for summer as well. Um, sort of more sort of the, the nudes and beige. I'm, I'm a very big fan and khaki. I love all that, you know, so they're sort of like almost like safari type colours. Um, Adrian, my reception is bad and I can't see any video, but I can listen in like a podcast. 
and I can see the product you're presenting. Oh, well, Adri, thank you so much for tuning in anyway. I really appreciate it. Whether you can hear me, uh, you know, or see me, whether it's oral or visual, as long as you're here, I always very much appreciate that. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for joining. Uh, yes, khaki for summer is a fantastic thing. And I think certainly for a lot of men, uh, it's a very smart look, I think. You know, it's kind of with a sort of a beige suit trouser look. I mean, I think a lot of men look really good in a good pair of beige trousers. For me, I prefer slightly more... Oh, and we'll get onto this in regards to trouser styles. But for me, I prefer a slightly more loose-fitting beige trouser especially during the summer months just because you know i think uh you need it gives you the um the ventilation that one needs because you don't want you know slightly sweaty legs that's never a fine and attractive thing um so actually this is a good point to start talking about uh, men's trouser leg styles so you know in total there are a number of different styles obviously before we talked about the pantaloon which was obviously more of a historical uh trouser garment but Obviously, there are contemporary versions of the pantaloon today, which you can still buy. Um, but I want to talk about sort of the general fit. So obviously, you could go for a slightly more tapered uh, leg look, or there's the baggy uh, leg look, sort of more of a relaxed fit, which is what I just talked about a little earlier. Um, also, there's something like the bootleg cut, which can also be defined as a flare. Um, I have a couple of trousers myself, which, you know, I like to hark back from disco era of the 70s in regards to the flair and um the last one i suppose would be again sort of more even a, a more skinnier tapered um cut as well so obviously you, there's something more uh regular and then you've got the skinnier cut as well so it's really important again when you are when you're choosing your trouser that you make sure that you take your your um your style uh, that your, your preference into consideration and of course some styles in trouser leg look better on men than others and i personally believe that uh, men that are slightly shorter in statue uh, are better off not going towards the uh, flare look uh, because it will potentially make them look shorter or um, certainly the uh, skinny skinnier look as well I just don't think for shorter men that looks generally very flattering on their, their legs so um, Adrian uh, I love khaki for summer um, do you have to buy a size up to have a more relaxed fit or do you need to find a fit that's already tailored to look looser? Adrian, that's an absolutely fantastic question. Um, I believe, well, it works both ways to me because it really depends, I suppose, what you're going for. I, For me, the waist is probably the most important thing. So I, I, I start at the waist and then work my way down. Um, and um, I guess it really just depends on what the cut is, to be fair. I mean, we're quite fortunate now, especially for menswear, that over the last uh, 15 or so years that... A lot more styles have been introduced to suit different types of men's uh, shape, uh, height and, 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 and legs, essentially. I, I remember when I was um, in my late teens and obviously skinny jeans were very much in vogue. But it was still around the time when uh, companies and uh, clothing houses weren't designing uh, really. Or it wasn't really widespread in regards to skinny jeans. So I had to buy women's women's skinny jeans instead because they were, they were available. So I used to go to Topshop. R.I.P. The uh, the women's section, and then I have to try on a few. Although they wouldn't let me try them on in the women's changing room, that was always a, which I can understand. I, I totally I, I agree with that policy. Um, so hopefully maybe that slightly answers your question. But um, I, I think really it's really up to it's really up to the chap. It's really up to the guy. Um, but also the other thing I, I'd like to talk about, and again it's totally in relation to that, is um, that I don't know about some of these trousers that I currently have on display, like the. Uh, the absolute apparel ones that I just put on there right now, which you're going for twenty one dollars right now, guys. That's a steal. It's basically a couple of drinks at the bar. Um, but uh, some of these trousers, they would be, uh, they wouldn't have the the seam basically, the the leg seam essentially. So sometimes you will have to get certain trouser legs taken in. And um, funny enough, I actually used to do that as a job, part of uh, part of my training when I was working in a suit shop off of German Street with that statue of Bute Brummel I was talking about earlier. Part of my job was to, uh, you know, um, tailor and alterate uh, men's trousers. So um, I used to get them to wear the trousers and, you know, I had to get my knees and, uh, you know, I'd sort of have to... And also I'd make sure that they were comfortable with the height of the trouser leg. I'd make them wear their shoes as well because it's really important, again, unless you're wearing ankle swingers, which bear in mind is a, a trouser leg which is 
slightly higher off of the uh, the the modern day shoe, so they almost swing around where your ankles are. If you're not going to be going for that look, which you know is you know is much to one's taste, um, generally speaking, you'd want the trouser leg to um, touch the shoe and also to create a, a break within the bottom the bottom lower third of the trouser leg. So, um, and also there's there's different techniques and whatnot in regards to that. And also you can have a turn up um, cuff um, on the trouser leg as well. So there's also different variations in regards to men's tailoring and, and uh, trouser leg length. Um, and Drianne, uh, I lived for a skinny jean back in the day. Yes, so did I. Um, I would say bring them back, but I just don't feel it anymore. You know, I think for me, there was a time and a place, you know, that was when I was like 19 or 20. And I think maybe because I'm slightly an old, older gent now, uh, perhaps I need a slightly more relaxed fit. Um, Adrian, is it possible to tailor men's pants so they fit women better? Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with women wearing men's trousers. Uh, of course not. I mean, obviously, if you look at someone like uh, Marlene Dietrich, for instance, who was very well famed for wearing men's trousers, you certainly can. Uh, the only thing that I believe that you would probably potentially have to alter or change is the uh, where the seat region is within uh, within the, the pants or the trousers. So you'd probably maybe want a slightly higher seat. And by seat, I mean sort of where the crotch area and the, the, the rear area is. You'd probably have to alter that slightly. Maybe to be, it depends, again, what look you're going for to create more of a streamlined look. And also generally women's uh women's upper legs are uh, slightly uh curvier than or fuller than men's uh not always the case but that that could be a thing so you'd obviously maybe have to alter the leg in regards to to suit that type of, of body shape um so, uh, i have a pair of men's jeans that are fabulous but the crotch and waist are too loose they can fix that yeah yeah it's totally possible um for both ways actually so to alter the trouser um, in that area, oh, basically a, a lot of well-made trousers and jeans to an extent are highly alterable. Um, and actually there's some trousers that do come with extra fabric as well uh, that is hidden. So if that needs to, if the vents and the side seams need to be let out to allow, you know, someone that maybe has a slightly fuller figure or maybe they've put on a little bit during lockdown like we all did, then that's totally viable as well um they can fix that the leg fits so nice and makes my legs look 30 feet long well that's always a fine thing i think that's what you want and actually i think like any garment but certainly like any trouser leg that can do that and it can appear very flattering towards um your figure is always a fine thing as well and that's why i was saying slightly earlier that like it's better for men of a sort shorter stature to stay away from some of those different styles we talked about earlier uh, because, you know, it's so important to, to, to look good and to feel great as well. And if you think that a garment can add, like you're saying, like a couple more inches or a couple more feet onto you, then that's a brilliant thing as well. And I think maybe one show we could start talking about men's shoes as well. And obviously there's certain men's shoes which can allow slightly more of a stack in the back where the heel is and just like gives you that little bit of extra inches, which, you know, let's be honest, a bar or a club certainly do help uh, a lot of chaps. Um, so just moving on from that as well, just like some other trousers that I've got, these I generally tend to wear in winter and I've had these for a couple of years now. Um, and they are, uh, Prince of Wales check trouser. So again, so these, these are wool. So that's why I would probably suggest wearing these more in the autumn and winter. Um, and actually, you know, you can see here, uh, or well, Adrian can't see, but you, Adrian, you can hear here that, uh, these have been, these have been, uh, slightly taken in as well. Um, and there is that little bit of extra fabric at the hemline because you never know. I might grow a few more inches. Who knows? Um, but uh, these are definitely some of my favorites uh, in my collection that I own. And I always seem to get a um, get, get a good response, uh, welcome response and a lot of compliments from a pair of trousers like these. Um, and I'm going to move on to the next product as well. So you guys can all check that and see it. It's a. Uh, the Brook Taverner men's trouser. And um, interestingly, actually, because obviously I'm live streaming in London right now, Brook Taverner are a British brand. Uh, they are based here. So I just thought I have to stick in at least one British product on every show. And this is the one today. And uh, they are currently going for $58.18. That's 15% off the retail price. It's actually more than 15% off the retail price because I believe they're also on sale as well. So this is an absolute steal. I mean, essentially, you're pretty much paying $30 each leg there, which is never a bad thing. Um, Adrian, 
I can't see, but you have a wonderful collection of pants, so I know they're fire. Uh, Adrian, you have to. Love England. Exactly, I have to. And thank you very much for the kind compliment, Adrian, as well. Yeah, I know. But also, as you know, Adrian, I've got a lot of my clothing still in America. So hopefully we're going to rectify that soon. Roll on the 22nd of August. Um, I don't know if I told you that. I don't know. Well, we can discuss that afterwards. I think I did. Um, so uh, moving on, also another great um, cloth uh, and clothing for men's trousers, of course, is uh, what I like to call crushed velvet. Uh, so if you guys, again, this is more of a winter staple look, but velvet or corduroy rather as well, uh, are always brilliant in regards to the more holiday season as well. Of course, it's a slightly thicker, heavier fabric. Um, and these, uh, these are from a French designer uh, called Agnes B, Parisian designer, she's quite a famous lady. Um, and, uh, and again, I've had these for a number of years and I have the jacket to complement the trouser as well. And, uh, and again, they are slightly more of a relaxed fit. And the nice thing about uh, corduroy and velvet is that you do sort of, as I said, you get more of a slightly, you can have them in many different cuts as well, but I always tend to prefer a slightly more relaxed cut for my legs. Um, uh, Jan, stay tuned for me and Jono's joint sh bear shop show. Yes, I can't wait. Oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I mean, at one time, there was one time where we did have a, a live stream show together. Alas, but it wasn't on the Bear Shop app. But who knew at that time, Adrian, that a few years later we'd be having our own show and then again another joint show uh, for Vera Shop. So it's it's so funny to think about it. But um, yeah, I can't wait. Honestly, it'd be brilliant. You could you could be on my show. I could be on yours. We could talk about you know cosmetics uh, and my lack of knowledge of. Uh, and then we could go back into men's suiting again. That is all to play for. So, uh, guys out there, ladies and gents, please do stay tuned. Adrian and I will be having a joint Vera Shop show very shortly when I'm back in the States. Um, we were ahead of our time. I totally believe that. We were ahead of our time. Um, right, moving on to the last product because I've got to wrap up soon. Um, it is the Edwin Maison Chino pants. Um, and I like Edwin because they're a Japanese brand. They tend to do a lot of jeanswear, actually, Edwin, a lot of sort of like more like vintage aesthetics. Um, these, to me, feel like they're a bit more of a contemporary cut and fit. Um, again, they are more of a sort of like casual, uh, but still formal wear. You know, I mean, I like the uh, the cut and the sort of slim line and beautiful colour to them as well. They're quite nice. Nice bold black, which is nice. Sometimes I find with uh, jeans uh, and trousers, I can stay away from some of the fading. You know, sometimes they go a little bit overboard in regards to the, the wash. So I quite like it, the fact that it's almost like a primary jet black and it'll be very suitable, you know, not just for the, the office, but also going to the pub afterwards for a few drinks or, or a good bar. Um, thank you, Adria, very classic. Theme. Yeah, I know, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd end the show on a more classic note and I just thought as well, because obviously, the Olympics are currently taking place in Tokyo right now. So I thought I'd also have to include um, a brand or you know, a product from Japan. Because I know, obviously, you had a matcha tea uh, show today, which I, I avidly watched. Uh, unfortunately, I'm drinking coffee at the moment. So I'm certainly on the, the coffee high. Um, but uh, yeah, so these are the Edwin Maison Chino pants. And I actually do have a pair of chinos with me to finish off the show. These are mine, as we talked about earlier. These are the uh, these are beige and more of a sort of a natural color, um, and I think again they are perfect for summer wear. Um, so again, if you want something more of a lighter garment but still a trouser leg, I would certainly go for something more like uh, see if I can like linen, or um, you know you've got a chino pant as well, which is probably the most preferable. And I actually, to be fair, I like wearing some trousers during my uh, my summer vacation, as I am a Brit. You know, no one needs to see the legs. Or well, maybe they do. Anyway, guys, I've got to wrap up now. It's been a fantastic show once again here on the Veroshop Live app. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, all your support. Adrian, thank you very much again for all your support. We will be having that live duo show coming up very, very soon. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry, quickly, how do you... How do you feel about drop crotch pants? Yeah, drop crotch pants. Yeah, but uh, the hottie pants. Yeah, I mean, they're very MC Hammer and they were in vogue about 10 years ago. Maybe they're coming back. I wouldn't be surprised. I like, let's get the 90s hip hop vibe coming. 
Why not? Um, and also, actually, they're very similar to, I mean, they're very similar to Middle Eastern variation of pants. But also, they do a very similar thing that I was talking about earlier in regards to um, to accentuating the crotch. Essentially, that's what we're talking about. But alas, I'll have to get back on that another time. Guys, thank you very much for joining me once again here on the Vera Shop Live app. I will be back next Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you once again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye for now.